What's up everybody? I'm Subba Hilo Miriam and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Subba Says So. I hope everybody is well and blessed. I just wanted to come out here and quickly talk about the recent interview with Amada La Negra on The Breakfast Club. Now, Amada shares her struggles with colorism as a Dominican Afro-Latina artist within the Latino entertainment market. There really isn't a lot of Afro-Latinos doing anything on the entertainment, and if they are, they're really not talking about it. Why is it so hard for people to understand or accept me? Because I just feel like there's this, this standard of beauty in the entertainment industry that you have to look a certain type of way in order to be pretty. Your hair needs to be straight and silky in order to be pretty. Or if you're a Latina, you have to look like J-Lo, Sofia Vergara, Shakira. But when you look like me, oh, you are you don't look Latina enough. What does that even mean? There isn't a Latin country that doesn't have people that look like myself. So why aren't we on magazine? Why aren't we on movies? Is why aren't true? we? So it bothers me. I did watch the interview when it initially came out, and I thought about it for the past couple days and I finally came to the decision that yes I would actually like to talk about it because it's not only something that I can personally relate to also colorism is a topic that should be discussed more often and on a larger scale now if you guys want to learn more about Amara go check out my latest video Saba say what and I do go into more detail about Amada and who she is. Now, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love The Breakfast Club. They're actually my favorite radio show out of all of them with Charlamagne the God, DJ Envy, Angela Yee. They're just an amazing trio. They, they tackle amazing topics with raw opinions to follow that I feel like a lot of people can agree with. However, with this particular interview, I was really disappointed, especially with Charlamagne. With him being as pro-black as he is, he really lacked the, the simple understanding of what Amada was saying and I was really rooting for him because I felt like he would have been able to contribute to the conversation and really connect with Amada. But instead he turned around and insulted her by asking if the colorism was all in her head. What is the struggle? The struggle is, um, I think it's almost, it's, it's very similar. Obviously they'll always pick up, they'll always pick the lighter. You know, they always pick the ones that look, like I said before, like J-Lo's and Shakira's and stuff before they look at us. Who cares if you're talented? Who cares if you're educated? You know, you're always going to be the last option. You sure not in your mind? I just feel like it's crazy that he, he just didn't understand where she was coming from when we all know how prevalent colorism is, not only all over the world, but amongst African Americans in the entertainment industry. Mass media from any country in the world perpetuates a certain image especially the women, that never emulates what the people actually look like. The prototype is usually lighter skin mixed with European aesthetics, depicting this racially ambiguous look, and this is nothing new. I can personally relate as an Eritrean woman because I have faced colorism all my life and still do to this day. Eritrea is a small country in East Africa where the people are an admixture of mainly Middle Eastern and some Italian genes. However, not all the people depict this look while carrying the same genes, if that makes any sense. Now, my mom has this look, but my father doesn't, in whom my sister and I have taken after. Growing up, people from our community would always tell my sister and I that, you know, it was a shame we didn't look more like our mother and that, you know, that we had this more African, darker look. And it was just so insulting because it just made us feel like, you know, we weren't good enough or aesthetically pleasing enough to be Eritrean. So let me share a little story with you guys that happened to me. A couple years ago, my cousin and I were at the Eritrean soccer tournament and one of the attendees approached my cousin, he knew her, and went up to her to greet her. He then proceeded to talk to her in our language, Tigrinya, about me asking her you know how could she bring this african girl that had no place being there who is this dark girl and we were literally so appalled and disgusted with what he was saying because obviously i speak my language to Grinia and i understood everything he said so once we confronted him you know he tried to play dumb and he tried to act like he was joking around and he knew that i knew what he was saying and he knew i was eritrean and it was just such bullshit and that is a perfect example, you guys, of colorism and ignorance at its finest. Going back to The Breakfast Club's interview, I can completely attest to what Amada is saying about colorism because I actually visited her home country of the Dominican Republic and saw it for myself. When I was just chilling in the hotel watching TV, I never once 
saw an Afro-Latina being depicted. However, when I would go outside of my hotel, just into the general public, 80 to 90% of the people were Afro-Latino. It just blew my mind. I noticed that with the, a lot of the lower end service jobs, they were mainly ran by Afro-Latinos and a lot of the higher end um, jobs were ran by the more stereotypical Latino. So, you know, Amada is completely right when she says that it's typically the, the JLo's and the Shakira's that are being depicted. Let me know what you guys think. And if you have faced any type of colorism in your life, or maybe you still do, I would love to know. So subscribe to my channel, like, comment, share this video, hit that notification bell so that you're up to date with all my latest videos. Why? Someone says so. Mwah. Love y'all, all shades of y'all.